So Kelvin Joseph is supposed to have two picks. I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm just gonna stay calm, temper my expectations, and not, you know, jump all up and down in the living room here. But uh, you know, you 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 can see the ball skills here. You can see the coverability, and I kind of like the plan with Kelvin Joseph. And I don't know if it was planned. I just know Jordan Lewis went on IR. But you know, sometimes this is a business of if you let the next man like step up, like he stays there sometimes. Um, what I'm what I'm really digging about the Kelvin Joseph rollout is that we're just not showing up in the playoffs one day. Like, I right, Kelvin Joseph, here's Odell Beckham. Or just, I right, Cooper Cup's right here, you know, AJ Green there, you know what I mean? Mike Evans. Um, we're, we're, we're just kind of slowly but surely bringing Kelvin Joseph along, and we've seen these flashes of his talent and what he does well. Right here, you just see a good feel for the ball in the air. Now, to be fair, I'm ready to lose my mind, but to be fair, Kelvin Joseph could, in theory, have two interceptions in two games here. Trey Diggs had that same problem, right, to where he generally knew where the ball was and he had ball skills, but he had trouble bringing it in. I think the more comfortable you get in coverage, the more you can focus on bringing it in. So uh, that's just me forecasting Kelvin for next year, but we got some more this year stuff to talk about. Like the playoffs, right? You know, we're going to talk about these players and, you know, just guys that we need in general uh, moving forward. I think Kelvin Joseph is a guy that we're going to need, especially this week. Um, he's a guy that we're going to need in the playoffs. Like we need his athleticism. We need him moving around. Uh, we need his coverage ability, ball skills, because takeover is king. Uh, pardon me, turnover, takeaways are king. Um, what I think... Kelvin Joseph did a really good job of this week is that he was very active in the run game. Like he didn't shy away from going to go get, you know, running backs here. This is Jalen Rager lined up in the backfield here. And, you know, if it's the Eagles fans that saying, but Vaj, you played our backups and our seconds and third string players. To be fair, it's your fault that Jalen Rager could be a starter, backup, or third string player. That ain't that ain't my business, sir. But um Kelvin Joseph uh read the play, tracked it down, got uh Jalen Rager out of bounds there. Solid stuff. We got cartel view. Of course, we got cartel view. You can get a good look at Kelvin Joseph twenty four right here. Um, like I said, same old thing. You know, we'll 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 see. You know, we'll see Trey Diggs sometimes, and, it, and this is going to be an interesting conversation for for this week versus the Niners. We'll see Diggs kind of not always want to tackle, or we'll see him going for the football when he when he when he should be wrapping up. I think that's a good conversation for what we're going to you know see about Debo, right? Do you want to shut down Debo and pass coverage with Trey, but when it's time to tackle him, Trey may be a little compromised or whatever, or do you want to put Kelvin on there? You know, Kelvin ain't huge. Like, he ain't bigger than. Like, he's not that that much bigger than Trey. Like, Trey's taller or whatever. But, you know, I would say that Kelvin is 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 more down to, to tackle, more willing to tackle or whatnot. Which one of those guys do you put on Debo or do they share? I just think those are both questions that we can ask. There were some Cowboy fans in my chat box last Saturday that were panicking a little bit. They thought that Boss Man was getting picked on a bit. And I just think that he was covering Devontae Smith, and they were trying to just get the ball to Devontae Smith. That makes sense. Um, but besides those two plays, like, Boss Man had, like, great – coverage plays like for the for the most part uh, i'm gonna be um showing those on the patreon film so be sure to you know tune in for that but you know i think it was just playing like another play where he like you know made plays on the football pretty good plays you know uh he even in his um his college film y'all can go back and check that out he's always been you know driving the ground make that play you know that kind of guy you know every corner don't make those plays some corners make hip to hip plays other corners make driving plays um kelvin joseph if you do get a little bit of room on him he makes these driving plays so we'll need that and we have one more play of Kelvin Joseph uh, patrolling and containing the outside, uh, funneling the run game back inside, you know, where he gets his help. Let me put it here. You'll see it much better on a cartel view here. Um, run goes wide. Kelvin Joseph is wide. Get that turn. Boom, bouncing back inside. That's where his help is. Now, why is this play so important? Well, the San Francisco 49ers do shit just like this. Uh, they love to get guys wide. So, of course, you need a tackling corner out wide. Makes sense, right? D Law is another player that you're going to need uh, this Sunday. Yeah, this Sunday versus 49ers. One, you're going to need him in the run game, of course. But the ultimate goal is to just stop the run early. If we stop the run early and get points on offense, it'll force Jimmy Garoppolo to throw the football. Jimmy Garoppolo loved to throw the football to the other team. And that's something that we've been good at. Um, so if he'll, if he'll do that on the regular, if he'll just do that on a normal day, then of course he'll do it once pressure is upon him. All oh, that's very important. I think D-Law is going to be a big anchor for that. 
I really appreciate Neville Gallimore being able to win in two ways. I mean, just because he's big as a dump truck now doesn't mean that he's lost um, his quickness, right? Take a look at this play. Neville Gallimore is lined up over the center. He's going to be powerful right here. He's going to two-gap shoot hands. The center's not going to move him at all. Then he's going to uh, come off the block and make a tackle on the running back right here. Can the game well. Take a look at him again. Take a look at him again. And then you see Neville Gallimore and B-Gap winning with hands and quickness, right? So, you know, we just slowly but surely, I just want to see Neville Gallimore develop into one of them dudes, develop into one of them gangsters, man. We had this thing about Malik Collins where he showed up, had a good year, and we didn't see much else from him. Uh, Neville Gallimore, he showed some flashes last year. I think he's turning into one of them guys this year. I think next year if he just keeps developing, I don't know if they still got more peanut butter from him, but they'll probably keep him in the weight room and things like that. Um, I just want to see Neville continue to improve his technique and maybe he can be one of them, them, them guys for us moving forward. And one more thing I thought was important is that uh, Luke Gifford got some reps. Um, and that's super important moving forward because we know that Keanu hurt his arm um, in the game the other day. So really all we got is Micah and Layton. And there may be a situation where we may have to call upon Luke Gifford for a little bit if we move Michael around. I know that we still got J. Ron Curse and Donovan that can come down and do linebacker things, but you really just never know. And the one thing that I kind of, you know, that makes me kind of feel cool about that is that, you know, Luke Gifford is instinct guy, but he's not like athlete guy. But Luke may be really, really good for this matchup. And let me just be clear with really, really good. But like, I think we can survive with Luke for this matchup because, um, you know, Luke's not super athlete guy, but this isn't like a super Bernie fast offense that we're going against. Like, and let me be clear, like they're fast in terms of NFL level athlete fast. But like, think about, you know, if we was to line up against Arizona and they got, you know, Greg Dorch, Christian Kirk and Rondell Moore lined up out there and Rondell get the jet sweep and now you know Luke Gifford got to chase him down like that's a different kind of speed or dealing with you know with a Tyreek uh, Tyreek Hill Miko Hartman type of blazy speed fast offense or hey there's Odell Beckham about to do something as a number two receiver I don't mean that you know that 49ers are slow but in context of who we could be dealing with the 49ers are a team that I feel better about Luke dealing with um, you know than any other offense and you know, to to be fair, 49ers, they, they, they may do a little bit of, you know, moving around and line of scrimmage, motion deception type of stuff. Well, you know, Luke Gifford is a good diagnostics guy, diagnostics guy. You know what I mean? He's just not the athlete. So if anything, he can be like, hey, yo, Micah is going this way and then Micah makes a play. Like, that'll be fun. Um, but if anything, you know, we need guys that can diagnose plays and tackle this week. So if we, if we were to go with Luke Gifford, I wouldn't hate it at all. Um, just matchup wise or whatever but hey that's it i ain't want to talk too long man i just want to show y'all this little bit uh we're probably going to do some offensive stuff on the next film session and um you know we're going to go throughout our week round table is pending because skywalker still is superstitious and he thinks that round tables make us lose big games so we'll see how that goes but uh we will be having scoutcast so tune in for that uh and if you want to see the long form film session hit up the patreon patreon.com slash vice lombardi y'all hold it down for the doski walsh and the peace man till next time peace Thank <laughs> you.